Hello everybody, by popular demand, today I want to bring you this video about how to install and use Publish. The installation and usage is really simple, but many of you have asked for it. So today I want to give you a couple of tips and in case it doesn't work for you. To start, you need to go GitHub repo and then you can scroll down until you get to the installation part. The simple way is to use the Publish tool, which is what many of you have been troubled with. So you just want to copy this line here, go to your terminal, any folder that you want, and basically paste it here. And this is going to use Git to clone the project, the source code of the project here. This is a recommendation I'm going to give you. The way I'm using it is I have the source code of the project pulled locally on my system and I directly use that source code to build and work with my website. This has a couple of advantages. You can directly work on the source code of Publish itself and improve it and tweak it and make it a little bit your own and then maybe you can do plugins or whatever you need for that. The second part is that anytime that there is an update on the command line tool, which is what we're going to be using now to start the, the website, you can just pull from Git and run the installation command again and that's it. You don't have to do anything else. If you don't keep that repo around, you need to pull it every time to update the command line tool. That's how it works for now. Maybe in the future we have this be a homebrew or another package manager and maybe it helps it. But for now I recommend you to do this. Once you have the repo downloaded, you see that you have a publish tool here. You can just go inside and then you can run make. This tool you need on your system. Make it just a build and installation system. If you don't have it, I recommend you to install it because a lot of open source tools use it. It's basically been in use for I don't know how many years, so it's a standard in our, in our industry. It does a lot of things, you don't need to worry about any of them. You just need to write make and that's it. So this is going to use Swift to build a release version of the command line tool. And once everything is done, it's going to make a copy of the resulting binary into your path. Usually it's the user local bin. This is the second issue that many of you had. If for any reason you don't have this folder, this part of the process is going to fail. And there are many reasons why this can happen. Maybe you have been screwing up with your system or macOS at some point has changed the way these folders work. So you just need to take a look that the folder exists. To know exactly which folder you need to use, you can go to the make file and you're gonna see this line. So basically you can just see that the, the, this install is just making a copy or, or moving the file, it's nothing special. The one that you care about is this. You need to make sure that this is on your computer and that it's also on your path because otherwise you're gonna be able to run it directly. If you don't want or you don't need to be able to run publish from anywhere, you can directly run it from here. That's another way and it's exactly the same thing. Once you have this, I recommend you to probably close the terminal completely and open it again. That's so the this binary is available on every of your terminals. If not, you can use, sometimes you can use reload and that also helps. But just in case, close it if it doesn't work and open it again. What I recommend you is, as I said, to keep the, the publish repo there. And now what you want to do is you have access to this publish tool. Okay, and if you run it, it gives you a little information about it. What you want is publish new. But this is gonna run the command on the current folder. So you need to make a folder first. So you can do it from finder, but we can do it also from here. You can do an example, and now you can go inside. And now it's what you can do, publish new. Just to show you that it's also possible, if in case this fails, you can also do this, okay? So you can go up a level, go inside publish, and then go inside build, and then go inside release, and finally you can run the publish CLI. And now you want to pass new. This works the same way, exactly the same. There is nothing different, okay? So now, what do we have on this example? Two things have happened. First of all, let's open it with Finder. One thing is that this tool created the necessary directories for everything to work. The first is the content, 
with some of the default posts and default pages. Then you have resources, where is your, you're going to pull like your CSS scripts, JavaScript scripts, images, anything that you want. And finally is the source. The source is really important because this is your package. All the websites using Publish are a Swift package, so you need to get familiar with that. That's why you also have this package.swift. If, if you are using Xcode 11, you can just double click this, say yeah, okay, and Xcode is going to open the package and it's going to fetch everything that you need. You can see that when you open it, Xcode starts fetching all the dependencies that it needs in relation to Publish. Publish uses ink, plot, files, many other dependencies that are needed to make everything work. So you just need to wait a little bit until Xcode pulls all the files down. Now, at this point, you have everything ready. You can just run it and that will work. But what I recommend you is that you go to package. And again, you don't have to do this. This is just a tip that I'm giving you because that's how I basically use it. And you can do package and you can push this path. So what this means is that this package, instead of being a remote package that lives on GitHub or another Git repo, you use the package that is on your local computer. If you save now, Xcode is going to do this process again. It's going to resolve all the packages, which they are the same, so it shouldn't take you that much because the versions and everything are exactly the same. As you can see, it just detected and the package and saw that all the dependencies were the same and boom, it wasn't needed. The difference now is that now you can go here, you see that it says local. So you can go in these sources and you can play around with Publish itself. If you need something that it's internal, you can make it public, stuff like that. It's not super important for your first website, but I, I find it really useful. So now that you have this, you can just go to click my Mac here and on sources, examples, main, this is where you're going to build your website. And this is the default one. So if you run it on your Mac, this is going to basically run the compile process. It's going to compile all your website into something that is ready to be deployed. Any, any server that can serve files will be enough. You need to be able to run Swift or any other scripting language, nothing. Just you need to serve the files. That's it. That's what makes this so beautiful. If you take a look at the directories that we had, we can see that before we had this, now we have this resolve and that's because there has been this resolution of the packages needed with the specific versions and all that kind of stuff. You need to keep this around, don't get rid of it. And when Publish has finished building your website, you're gonna see that you have this output folder. This is what needs to be uploaded into a remote server. It's just a plain, simple HTML page, nothing more. The last thing I want to show you is that if you go to your website path, then you can do Publish Run. This is gonna, again, compile your website package and then run it in order to generate all the static files for your website. And then finally, which is the difference with Xcode, is that this is gonna start a local server so you can actually see your website in any browser. And as you can see, everything worked and the website started in localhost. So you can just go to your favorite browser and go to localhost and you can see here your website with the example content. That's it. Simple as that. Now you just need to generate more content in form of markdown files. And if you want to start changing stuff, this is where you do it. You just can change names, you can change the pipeline, all that information that it's on, on the repository. So that's it for today. I hope this helped you a lot and it gives you a couple of tricks to solve some of the issues that many of you have been telling me and I've been trying to help you individually, but I hope this can help you all at once. I don't have any relation with Publish, I'm just a fan of it, so please don't treat me as the customer support because I cannot dedicate a lot of time to this. Thank you very much. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe and nothing more. See you next time.